Hey, you in there? Anyone home? You cooking? The city of Phoenix has recorded the hottest July in its recorded history. And just in case these numbers don't do it for you, burn units in the city of Phoenix have actually been filling up with patients who've fallen on the asphalt. Because asphalt can be 60 degrees hotter than the air temperature. So people are actually falling and cooking on the sidewalks in Phoenix. (laughs) That's how hot it is. So all eyes have been on the city of Phoenix in regards to excessive heat. So, no pressure, but how exactly are you planning on cooling such a hot fucking city? A few years ago, the city of Phoenix created the first department of its kind, the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation, which we will lovingly refer to as OHRM, and no other major city had had organized a specific set of state funds for such a task force. OHRM has been a part of just about like everything. They're in conversations about new housing developments, about homelessness, about construction, about road work, with so much to focus on. How focused are they on their main thing? One thing that the office of OHRM, what they try to do is create air condition zones. They call them cooling centers, where people who are homeless or who have lost power, they can go to one of these centers and get air conditioning, bottled water, cooling towels, things like that. It seems like a nice idea, right? The city of Phoenix has been using decommissioned city buses as cooling centers. They sit the bus down in, on a random block and they just run it for the air conditioning. And there is something just dystopian about that, right? Am I alone? It's, it, maybe it's the, the definition of the word irony, right? The bus that is emitting CO2 that is causing the warming of the city is being used as an air conditioner <laughs> to cool the people in the city, which came first, the chicken or the nugget, right? It's one of those type of situations that seems so desperate. And it's true because the city is desperate. According to the Maricopa County Department of Public Health, there have been 18 deaths associated with excessive heat just this summer. What does the mayor of Phoenix make of this? What does she think of this? I know it's it's a huge task to handle climate change. And it's, it's, does, it seems unfair, perhaps, to throw that all on the shoulders of one mayor. But that's why you became the mayor, right? So I'm going to do it anyway. The mayor of Phoenix has been trying to petition the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which is, they're responsible for, like, declaring disasters. She's been trying to petition them to label excessive heat as a declarable disaster, which, if you're living on the streets in Phoenix... It's a pretty serious fucking disaster. And as of right now, FEMA is sort of like, well, it's just like your city. Like, deal with it. Like, like how hot is hot even? Like, even, like, how hot is even like hot? <laughs> That's how I imagine them talking. And so by declaring it a disaster, that would mean the city of Phoenix would have access to federal money to address the situation. And without that extra funding, they can't make that many cooling centers, so that's why they're using decommissioned fucking buses like it's a fucking dystopian nightmare. The problem with the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation is that it is reactionary. All it's doing is, like, frantically looking around, like, uh, 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 let's try, uh. And an example of that is the Mayor Gallego Gallego. uh, said that people should sign up for their Cool Callers program. And the cool callers, the cool, the, the cool callers, sounds like a bunch of uh, priests that go bowling on the weekends. <laughs> they are a service that check in on people and they check on if they're still alive. <laughs> like, how did those go? Hey, is anyone home? Are you in there? Yeah, you cooking? It seems like something that a mayor can go on to a radio show and say that that's what they're doing as a way to just say that they're doing something. So that's how the city of Phoenix has been just scrambling to deal with excessive heat 
and and I understand it because it's never been this hot before. But where's the surprise? Meteorologists are not surprised by this month in Phoenix. This July was always going to happen. It's actually happening sooner than they thought, but it the, the timeline still lines up. So what should the city of Phoenix do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Come a little closer. The city of Phoenix needs to finally admit what is causing Phoenix to get so hot. And it's capitalism. It's trying to grow the economy instead of focusing on the people that live in Phoenix. The city is obsessed with how many more people we can get here hosting Super Bowls and WNBA finals and building theme parks. Ugh, Guy Fieri restaurants. Phoenix is trying to become the tourist destination. And by doing that, you're making it hotter for the people that live here all year round who don't just come here in the winter. We're stuck here in the summer too. We know that the effects of warming mean that we cannot make Phoenix cooler. We've done the damage. Fuck. When you don't accept the cause of the problem, you end up running city buses for 12 hours a day. That's the problem, idiots. Dear God. And there's no doubt that I'm, sh that I'm sure cooling centers save lives. I'm well, I'm sure the city of Phoenix will say that they do. But when you don't address the actual cause of the warming, you're not going to get anywhere. So is Phoenix going to stop tourism? Fuck no, that's a terrible idea. If you think like a mayor, when you, when you Google excessive heat in Phoenix, and you know, what do we do? How do we address it? Why? Um, my favorite articles like this one from NPR, they end with, what do we do now? Well, we just wait for it to cool off. And how cryptic, because it won't.